My name is Josephine Cameron, and I'm the author of Maybe a Mermaid. Today is a really good day for sitting in a cozy chair and reading a book, so I thought I would read you the first chapter of Maybe a Mermaid. It's actually the prologue. Prologue. The Beemobile. I was seven when I took my first ride in the Beemobile. It was the most beautiful car I'd ever seen a bright yellow hybrid with sleek black stripes down the sides and fuzzy bee antennas bouncing around on top, a honeypot air freshener hung from the rear view mirror. And the minute I breathed in that sticky sweet smell, I realized everything mom had ever told me was true. If you set a goal, work hard and stick to the plan, you too can win a car shaped like a bee. The summer mom won the Beemobile we got to fly all the way from Chicago to St. Louis, Missouri for the annual Beauty and the Bee convention. The award ceremony was held in a hotel ballroom with gold flowers and loop-de-loops on the ceiling. Mom and I stood backstage in matching yellow dresses while the CEO of Beauty and the Bee gave a speech about how Mom's stick to had helped her sell more honey-based beauty products than anyone else in the Midwest region. I peeked out at 500 people fanning themselves in the audience and my knees turned to jello. It doesn't matter if you feel brave, it matters if you act brave, mom whispered. She took my hand and we walked out onto the stage slowly, one foot in front of the other, waving at the audience like we'd rehearsed. Mom's hand was shaky and sweaty against my palm, but her hair glowed under the lights like a superstar. When we got to the podium, the CEO held up a set of keys and jangled them in the air. Young lady, she said to me, your mother has been promoted to chief pollinator. Do you know what that means? My tongue wouldn't work, but it didn't matter. All 500 people in the audience shouted the words for me. Brand new car. Mom and I made a spectacle of ourselves, jumping around and screaming at the top of our lungs. We couldn't help it. It was a great day. After the trip, Mom and I didn't sit around and bask in the glory of her promotion. We got right to work on our next five-year plan. We filled her whiteboard with sales goals, timelines, and action steps. We created a list of next hive destinations, and I put the pins on the map. Milwaukee, Indianapolis, Cleveland, Grand Rapids. The city sounded exciting and exotic, guaranteed to be filled with new friends and adventures. When everything was planned, Mom let me stand on the stool and erase the words chief pollinator from the goal section of her whiteboard. She spelled the new words slowly so I could write them one by one in my thick, uneven scrawl. Queen B. The letters squeaked with promise. Mom and I knew that the best way to reach a goal is to have a good incentive, a reward that you want so badly you'll work extra hard to get it. The B&B &B reward for reaching Queen Bee status was a diamond honeybee with golden wings. It was so glitzy that in St. Louis, we'd seen a woman in a red pantsuit grab, cry buckets of tears when the CEO pinned it to her lapel. But next to her new five-year plan, mom didn't put up a picture of a diamond bee. Instead, she taped up a dusty old postcard of a white building shaped like a boat sitting in a field of daisies. The building, had a black smokestack and porthole windows and a wide blue lake sparkled in the background. On the deck of the boat, a smiling pigtailed girl stood on her tiptoes and waved at the camera. Above her head, bright happy letters announced, the showboat resort where true blue friends meet. I turned the phrase around in my mind. It sounded old fashioned and magical, like a fairy tale, goosebumps tingled down my arms. What is it? I asked. Our new incentive, Mom said. I put a deposit down today to keep us on track. I nodded. A deposit on an incentive is a deposit on success. We're going to live there? It was the greatest idea I'd ever heard, but Mom shook her head. No, she said. But in five years, when I get promoted to Queen Bee, we're going to spend summers there, like I did when I was a girl on the boat, the showboat. Back then, there were a lot of things I didn't know. I didn't know that the Beemobile's antennas would lose their fuzz. 
or that the honey orange air freshener smell could fade away. I didn't know that cars and five-year plans sometimes fall apart or that moving to a new city and being the new girl in school every few months was nothing like an exotic adventure. What I knew when I was seven was that I would find my true blue friend at a magical boat-shaped resort in a picture postcard and that driving around in a car shaped like a bee would never, ever get old. And I'll tell you a little secret, and that is that the showboat in Maybe a Mermaid was based on a real place, or the idea of it was based on a real place. I grew up in Wisconsin, and we had a uh, resort nearby that had a pic a boat-shaped building right in the middle of the resort. It's where a lot of famous old um, vaudeville stars used to come and perform. And uh, by the time I was a kid, it was pretty run down and not very many people stayed there, but it always caught my imagination to see who would build such a thing, who would live there. And I always thought it might be fun to set a story at the showboat. <laughs>